has long been the British answer to soothe life's problems. In the midst of financial chaos and trauma, and even war, okay, lads, we're gonna move down now and get the tea. there's always a cup of tea. It's not surprising then, it was the British that came up with an invention that revolutionised the morning cuppa. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to raise your cup to the great British tea's mate. The tea's made was such a remarkable invention, it's found its way here, into the Science Museum. Yeah! They have an exhibition that's a treasure trove for all tea's made anoraks. Museum curator Rob Skidmore is the biggest of the lot. One of the earliest ones was actually patented in 1902. It was clockwork, which meant that you set the time for when you wanted your cup of tea. Uh, a spring would strike a match, which would light the spirit burner, that would go underneath the kettle, slowly boil the water. As the water boiled, the kettle would rise, you could see it tips forward, pouring the boiling water into your cup of tea, which would put out the spirit burner and then ring a bell to wake you up. This one here is the original prototype made by William Brenner Thornton, who actually went on to devise all of the teas maids in the early days made by the Goblin Company. These early teas maids were luxury items, costing more than an average weekly wage. But for years, they were wildly popular. Now they're teetering on the brink of extinction. Time for the teas maid is almost up. You might think it's our taste of posh coffee that's the culprit. Not true. We drink 165 million cups of tea a day, more than twice the number of cups of coffee we drink. No, I have questions for you, my friends, but luckily I know a woman that's got answers. Answers and lots and lots of teas maids. <laughs> so many teas maids, in fact, her home doubles as the national centre for these increasingly rare machines. But she does like to keep a chap waiting. Tea, tea's made, tea's ready. Sheridan, it seems only a good right and proper we have tea as we talk about. I think it's safe to say your obsession. I think it made. is. Sorry about that, but yes, I am obsessed. Why? Um, it started kind of by accident. My ex-husband didn't want me to have a tea's made. He said they were too big, too noisy. So I was feeling rebellious one day and I decided to buy one. And then I saw another one, it was slightly different, and I thought, oh, I'll have one of those as well. And now I've got about 150, so... Shall I see which one my dad had? Okay. I got, I'm, I'm very emotional about this, forgive me. <laughs> but that's the one my dad had. This sounds it's ridiculous. Tears I, in your could eyes actually, there. I could actually cry. <laughs> You're welling up. Because <laughs> my dad hunted high and low for that tea's made, and he went to great effort to make sure it was properly calibrated. <laughs> that's the word he used to make sure it would deliver the correct tea. Can you put your finger on the point at which the tea's made was at its absolute Zenith. In 1972, they were making 10,000 teas maids a week. And there's a manufacturer now who's making about 10,000 a year. Why are people less interested in teas maids now? We've got a very different lifestyle now. We have central heating, so um, when you get up in the morning to make a cup of tea, you can go down to the kitchen, it's still lovely and warm. The idea of staying in bed and enjoying a cup of tea is a long way in the distant past now. That is a cup of tea. I love teas maids. They're part of my growing up, they're part of my life, and they're part of what makes Britain great. And I suggest we bring them back. It's time for Britain to be great again and drink tea in bed. This does taste a bit funny, actually. <laughs>